an angel to bring me into the place which he prepared in the wilderness where I want to be. He is our refuge and fortress to lead us in the wilderness, in the wilderness where I want to be. In the wilderness, where I want to be, a place of safety. In the wilderness, where I got to be. Okay, Brother Antoine, I want to read the uh, Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life uh -huh. and may enter in through the gates into the city. Go ahead. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So these are Lord's, the Lord's commandments, sisters and brothers, and it let you know that these commandments are, go are going to be required even in the Father's kingdom. So if you're not, you don't keep these commandments, you're going to be outside. And the name's what it is. And the top of the list is there are dogs. I want to let you know one thing. He's not talking about full-egg dog. So you find out who the dog, or the Bible called the dog, because they are most important. So God had them at the top of the list that are not going to be in the kingdom. But we're going to get right to the lesson, sisters and brothers. But before we get to the lesson, I want to say this. I say it every year. You, you cannot kindle a fire on this Sabbath, on the weekly Sabbath, even though it's during the Feast of Tabernacle or any other feast. The only time you can warm up or cook anything on this Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, is when the annual Sabbath is on the same day of the weekly Sabbath. That's the only time. You need to do that to pull off the annual Sabbath on the same day. But if the weekly Sabbath don't fall on, on the annual Sabbath itself, or if the annual Sabbath don't fall on the weekly Sabbath itself, you cannot kindle a fire. 
person asked me, well, how can we feast? You can do it like you always did. The Lord said, prepare your food before the sun go down, or uh, before the Sabbath day, just like you do all year. So if the annual Sabbath don't fall on top of the weekly Sabbath, you cannot kindle a fire or cook anything. You can't use a microwave. You can't even use your automatic coffee, your electric coffee pot. Okay? So now we're going to get right to it. And one thing I used to say all the time, and I still need to say is that it's always good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Now this lesson, sisters and brothers, is, uh, uh, is titled The Servants of God, Separated and Persecuted. The Servants of God, Separated and Persecuted. Why did the Lord cause me to put this lesson together? It's because when so many people that came into this truth and they went back home and tried to show it to their family, they got outright rebellion, and some of them got persecuted. Some families got to the point that they don't even want to talk to you because of this truth. Now, we're going to show you, sisters and brothers, that when you're a true servant of God, you may as well expect some kind of opposition. That's why Jesus said what he said about the people that follow him. We're going to start this in Luke, the 14th chapter. Luke chapter 14. So the Lord put this here, and he didn't put it there for nothing, because he know that the time's going to come. And it, it was even in his day that people kicked against it. Why do you think, you know, the people, he, he was crucified because he had to be crucified to save the creation, but the people that crucified him weren't interested in that. They were interested in shutting him up because <clears throat> he was teaching, teaching contrary to what they teach. And look at how the apostles was driven. And look how Paul was chased. Then they killed John the Baptist. That's what Jesus meant when he said that the kingdom of God has suffered violence, you know, from John the Baptist on. And, and it's still suffering violence, sisters and brothers. And said, violence is going to take it by force. And we're going to show you the time going to come when the Lord is going to allow this certain organization to make war with the, with the saints and prevail, sisters and brothers. So he left you this because he wants you to understand that being a servant of God, <clears throat> a true servant, is going to get pretty rough sometime. We're going to start this in verse 25. Luke, the 14th chapter, and verse 25. Okay, go ahead. With him. And he turned and said unto them, uh -huh. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, he's telling you that. Your love for him is supposed to be so strong. And the word that he's putting out is supposed to be so strong until when, uh, uh, your love for you, until it's almost like hatred to your Self, to your mothers, your father, your sister, and brothers. Why is that he put that out there? Because whoever you love the most, that's who you're going to obey. He said, even your own life. Because sometimes what you want to do, compared, uh, compared to his word, is contrary, and you have got to deny yourself. Go ahead. And whosoever does not bear his cross uh -huh. and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Well, he's talking about your cross because you got to do what you have to do. You have to maintain your laws and statutes. You have to maintain the word of God and righteousness at all times. So if you can't buy your cross, you can't, you can't come after him. Go ahead and read. For which of you, intending to build a tower, uh -huh. sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, Go ahead. whether he have sufficient to finish it. Uh huh. Lest haply, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. He said, this is just not like getting ready to build something. And you don't have sufficient funds to complete it, so you start the building, but then you quit because you have run out of funds. Same thing with serving a God. Do you have? the fortitude to start this and continue. Because if you don't, 
when the pressure come up on you, you are going to faint. Then they're going to ask you, what happened to your holiness now? What happened to your law and your commandment that you're talking about keeping? He said, think about it. Consider the cause. Can you do this? Because if you can't do it, you may as well not start embark on it because you are going to faint in the way. Verse 33, verse 33, go ahead. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, uh -huh. that forsaketh not all that he has, go ahead. he cannot be my disciple. So he's letting you know now, if you cannot forsake all that you have, if you're not prepared to forsake all that you have for the word of God, you can't follow Jesus. You can't be his follower. Because Satan is going to always find out what it is that you love more and he's going to put it in your face. And if you don't have the strength to deny it, you're not going to make it, sisters and brothers. Let's go on to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Because this is what's going to happen. You're going to have to go against the status quo. What I mean by that, you're going to have to go against what's been taught as the word of God. And you are going to have to clear it up. And you're going to have to deny it as the truth and show other people that it come to you that this is not the word of God. This is not written in the Bible. And when you start doing that, somebody's going to be offended and they're going to take offense. Now we're going to start this second Timothy, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse one, because this is what you got. This is what you are dealing with. Go ahead and read. I charge thee therefore before God uh -huh. and the Lord Jesus Christ Go ahead. who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now this is, look, even this verse here denies what's been taught. People tell me that, uh, that people are in heaven right now. People tell me that people are in hell right now. That is totally contrary to what Jesus said. Because if they was in Heaven right now, that means they've been judged already. If they was in hell right now, that means they have been judged already. But right here, so Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, that's the living and the dead, at his appearance and his kingdom. Jesus' kingdom is not here. And he hasn't made his second coming yet. So if that's the case, then everybody is dead until he comes. But go ahead and read. Preach the word. Uh huh. Be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So he said, preach the word. Not argue your position or your point. Preach the word, he said. Re people say, I don't argue the Bible. What does reprove mean? What does rebuke mean? Then he said, exhort with all long suffering. That's with patience and doctrine. In other words, if you're going to talk to this word, have your book open and go and show you what's written in the book. Thus said the Lord, not thus said me. But you used to get this scripture and you need to turn out what's wrong. Go ahead and read. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Uh -huh. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And that time is here when they won't endure sound doctrine. So what do they do? They hire ministers or go to the churches that are going to preach to them what they want to hear. That's the itching ear, sisters and brothers. Sound doctrine has been gone a long time. It was gone before I was born. So people don't, can't endure it no more. They get offended. Go ahead and read. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth uh -huh. and shall be turned into fables. They're going to turn their way their ears from the truth ain't going to be turned away from fable. Sisters and brothers, we don't want to do it, but I'm going to tell you, we got a whole lot of fables going on. Christ born on the 25th day of December, that's a fable. He died Easter, uh, uh, Good Friday and rose Easter morning, that's a fable. People in hell being barbecued by Satan is a fable. At the funeral, they tell you that that's not your mother, your mother in the box. That's just her shell. She done made her transition. She done made her homecoming. She is looking down at you smiling. That is a fable, sisters and brothers. Even Sunday, the Christmas Sabbath is the Christian Sabbath day. That is a fable. 
So that's what we're dealing with now. And when you tell a lot of people like about that, they get offended. But that is the word of God. Keep reading. But watch thou in all things. But watch thou in all things. Go ahead. Endure affliction. Endure affliction because it's going to certainly come. Go ahead. Do the work of an evangelist. Uh-huh. Make full proof of thy ministry. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. How do you make full proof of your ministry? That's because you can say it, then you can go to the Bible and you can read it. If you cannot read it out of this Bible, without, if you're going to have to uh, uh, read a verse and take 30 minutes, to explain, uh, 30 minutes to explain that verse, maybe you don't understand that verse. Maybe it's not saying what you want it to say. That's when you make full proof. Be able to prove it by this book. Let's go into Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew chapter 15. Because I want to, want to put this out, there, out here, sisters and brothers, and let you know that maybe when you are talking the word of God and everybody loves you, you run into no opposition, maybe you need to check yourself. Because you got to remember, they crucified Jesus, they stoned the prophets and the apostles, so why is it that you're having such an easy time? You're not getting no word of opposition, but everything is, oh, you, we love you. You might get that from family members, but sometimes you don't even get it there. But let's Matthew, the 15th chapter, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Matthew 15 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Uh -huh. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, you know, Israel had a thing. They got washing and they had a tradition. You get a reach. You had to do so much washing your hand, washing this and washing that. By the time you get through washing, you ain't got no appetite left. He said, but why do your disciples uh, 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 transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat. Now, Jesus asked them a question. Go ahead. But he, but he answered and said unto them, Uh huh. Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? That's a good question. Why do you also, well, why do you transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? Go ahead and read. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. Uh huh. And he that cursed father or mother, uh -huh. let him die the death. Go ahead. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, uh -huh. and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Now look, when the Lord said, honor thy father and thy mother in the commandments, he didn't have no, uh, uh, he didn't have nothing else added to it. He said, honor your father and your mother, that your life might be long on this earth. But he said, you, you guys saying that if, you take care, that's what that really comes down to. If you take care of your father, your mother, and you give them money and stuff like that, you don't have to honor them. So by your tradition, you have done what? Go ahead. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect. They made the commandment of God of none effect. Because you say, oh, if you take care of them, you don't have to honor them. Go ahead and read. By your tradition. Uh-huh. Ye hypocrites. Uh-huh. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying. You hypocrites. Go ahead. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. Isaiah said this people draw near unto me with their mouth. Go ahead. And honored me with their lips. And they honored me with their lips. Go ahead. But their heart is far from me. Uh-huh. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Look. He said that they draw near to him with their mouth and honor, uh, uh, and honor them with a lip. Oh, Lord, we love you. Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, God is so gracious. He is my God and light. He is my personal Savior. He said, but you honor me with your mouth. But your heart, which is your mind, is far from me. He said, but in, in vain, you know what in vain means? For nothing. For nothing they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. If it didn't, if it didn't come out of the Bible, it is the commandments of men. He said, Isaiah said that. So let's go into Isaiah and look at it, sisters and brothers. 
Let's go into Isaiah, the 29th chapter. See, because when it comes to the word of God, there is no room for compromise. God don't compromise. I know some brothers go out and try to compromise with other Hebrew Israelites, and they come back talking like them. So wait a minute. You were supposed to take them, convert them, but now it looked like they didn't converted you. Well, you know, in the name of brotherhood. In the name of brotherhood, they're going to need a shoe spoon to get the people in the hell so many is going right. to it. Right. The word of God. That is it, sisters and brothers. But Jesus quoted Isaiah. That's really something. You have people out there say, I'm a New Testament Christian, but the, but the Christ that you follow, he quotes Isaiah. And we're going to show you his quotation. We're going to start at verse uh, uh, Isaiah 29 and verse 10. Isaiah 29 and verse 10. Okay, read it. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of a deep sleep uh -huh. and hath closed your eyes. Uh -huh. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Now, why is he... Covered your eyes, closed their eyes, because they refuse to see. That's right. They don't want to hear the truth. You can read it to them, but they don't want it. So he didn't close your eyes, your prophets and your rulers and your seals. He have covered the seals, the one that's supposed to be the one that see the truth and know what God wants. Go ahead and read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book uh -huh. that is sealed. Go ahead. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. Uh -huh. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Now, you can't read a book that's sealed. It's just like it's closed and with bands on it. They said, read this. He said, I can't read this book because it's sealed. Go ahead and read. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, uh -huh. saying, read this, I pray thee. Go ahead. And he said, I am not learned. And it's delivered to one that's not learned. That's somebody that can't read. And you tell him to read this. I can't read it because I can't read. I hear people say that, used to say in the old days, you know, Pastor Johnson, he can't read or write, but he sure can preach. Well, what is he preaching? He's preaching the tradition of man. So being that the one that can read can't read it because it is sealed, and the other one can't read it because he can't read, then what's the condition? Go ahead. Well, for the Lord said, uh -huh. for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth Go ahead. and with their lips do honor me, uh -huh. but have removed their heart far from me Go ahead. and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So if the book is sealed and the one and another can't read it, but you're going to preach, then what are you preaching? Mm -hmm. The precepts of men, sisters and brothers. Not the word of God. Go ahead and read. Therefore, behold. I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, uh -huh. even a marvelous work and a wonder. Go ahead. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, uh -huh. and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. It, 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 i give you a good example. The wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the wisdom of the prudent men shall be hid. I'll give you an example. Every Easter they tell you that Christ died, on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. And Christ told you in Matthew that he was going to be in the grave three days and three nights. All you have to do is be able to count and you'll know that something's wrong here. And nobody ever bothered to pick up an encyclopedia or a history book and look up what Easter stand for? It represents fertility, fertility goddesses. That's why you got the Easter eggs. Then you got the little rabbits everywhere. They even have what they have for Easter, what they call a bunch of temple prostitutes, sisters and brothers. And you worship this as godly. Your wise men, your preacher teach you this. Your teacher teach you this. It's a fable and it's pagan. So what are you doing? So the Lord have destroyed your, the wisdom of your wise men. They can't figure out. You can't get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. Go ahead and read. Warn to them that seek deep to hide their counsel uh -huh. from the Lord. Go ahead. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? So they hide their counsel from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they works in the dark and they say, who seeth us? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And who knoweth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down uh -huh. shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Now, what are you saying? You are turning things upside down. Right. Go be esteemed as the potter's clay. What do you mean, Brother Boone? 
the first me the message that Mary got that she was going to have Jesus, the angel told her that the Lord God was going to give him the throne of his father David, and he's going to rule over the house of Jacob forever. But you said he's going to take us to heaven. You have people running around talking about you have pre-great tribulation raptures. And the Lord, and because the Lord going to come and we're going to, He's going to rapture us off to heaven because we're going to meet him in the air. But look, if you go to Matthew, the 50, uh, 24th chapter, start at verse 39, it tells you point blank. After the tribulation of those days shall the Lord come. So what is that? Precept of me. Where is your wisdom? So what you're doing is God said everybody that's ever died is still dead until the first resurrection. You said they're in heaven. So you didn't turn things upside down, sisters and brothers. Finish that. For shall the work say of him that made it, uh -huh. he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Now that's what these people saying, that God didn't make them and that God didn't have no understanding. Why are they saying that? It's because they have been fed for generation, generation, strong drink and wine. I'm not talking about the wine and the, and the whiskey you drink out the bottle. I'm talking about spiritual drunk. Let's back up to the ninth verse of this 29th chapter and read it. The ninth verse. Go ahead and read. Stay yourselves in wonder. Uh-huh. Cry ye out and cry. Go ahead. They are drunken, but not with wine. Stay yourself in wonder. Cry you out and cry, but they are drunken, but not with wine. Go ahead. They stagger, but not with strong drink. But they, and they stagger, but not with strong drink. What are they stagging from? Religion. False religion. They are drunk. Let's back up to Isaiah, the 28th chapter, because it always started with the priest sisters and brother, which is Israel. And now it spread it all over the world. Isaiah 28, and let's start at verse 1. Isaiah 28 and verse 1. Okay, read it. Woe to the crown of pride, uh -huh. to the drunkards of Ephraim. <laughs> Woe to the, proud of, uh, the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim. Go ahead. Whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, uh -huh. which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Uh-huh. So their beauty is a, it's like a fading mm -hmm. flower. They behave like them that's overcome with wine. They're drunk. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're talking about. They're mumbling and saying nothing. Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7, and go ahead. But they also have erred through wine. Uh-huh. And through strong drink go are ahead. out of the way. So they erred through wine and through strong drink. They're out of the way. Go ahead. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. Uh-huh. They are swallowed up of wine. Go ahead. They are out of the way through strong drink. Uh-huh. They err in vision. Uh-huh. They stumble in judgment. Ain't that something? So they err in vision and stumble in judgment. We ain't talking about no physical drunk. We talking... Spiritual drunk. Go ahead and read. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, uh -huh. so that there is no place clean. He says, so all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, that there is no place clean. What is this vomit and filthiness? Bad doctrine, sisters and brothers. The precepts of men and not the word of God. When the Lord saw that condition, he asked a question. What is this question? Go ahead and read. Whom shall he teach knowledge? So whom shall he teach knowledge? Go ahead. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk uh -huh. and drawn from the breast. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. I'm going to throw something in here right quick, sisters and brothers. Hold your spot here. Because we're going to show you what this milk is that he's talking about. Let's go quickly to the second, first Peter, the second chapter. But hold your spot here. I want you to see what milk that he said you have to be weaned from. Second Peter, uh, first, uh, uh, first Peter, the second chapter. Because you need to know what milk he's talking about. It's one thing for me to keep telling you that, but sooner or later I need to read it to you. First Peter, chapter 2, and start at verse 1. First Peter 2 and 1. Go ahead and read it. 
Wherefore, laying aside all malice uh -huh. and all guile. Lay aside all malice and all guile. Go ahead. And hypocrisy. And hypocrisy. And envies. And envy. And all evil speaking. And all evil speaking. Go ahead. As newborn babes. As newborn babes. Desire the sincere milk of the word. De desire the sincere milk of the word, sisters and brothers. Go finish that. That ye may grow thereby. That you may grow by. So who are the ones that he going to seek knowledge? Those that are weaned from the milk and draw from the blessed. What milk? The sincere milk of the word. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to make you grow, sisters and brothers. Now let's go back. I told you to hold your spot. Let's go back to Isaiah 28 chapter. And where do we stop at? We stopped at verse 10. At verse 10. Verse 10. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept. For precept must be upon precept. What is a precept? That's the rule of order. Mm -hmm. What order that God set out there? You can't get away from it. Precept must be up on precept. Go ahead. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Uh huh. Here a little and there a little. And that's why you have to read the word line upon line, not in between the line. Ain't nothing written in between the line. Here a little and there a little. Why here a little and there a little? Because we don't have the capacity. To interpret the word of God. So you have to read until he show you something over there that's going to interpret that which you have read over here. That is the way you're going to learn the word, sister and brother. That's how he teach you, just like we do it here. Go ahead and read what verse? Verse 11. Uh-huh. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. With stammering lips and another tongue. This, this, he letting us know, so no matter where Israel is, he going to speak to them in that language that they are, sisters and brother. That's why I don't get hung up on Hebrew. The Lord promised me whatever language I speak, he going to speak to me on, in that language. He proved that on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts. Mm -hmm. Jews come from all over the world. And when Peter then was talking, they said, are not these guys that are speaking Galileans? Why then do we hear them speak in our own language wherein we was born? He said, but even that, what's going to happen? Go ahead and read. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. To so whom he said, this is the rest, that he going to cause the weary to rest. And did that help? Go ahead and read. And this is the refreshing. Uh-huh. Yet they would not hear. They still wouldn't hear. But we're going to read a little more of this. Because okay. there's something I want to point out. He said, this is the rest that, we, that they're supposed to rest in. What? The word of God. What the Lord is telling them, what he's going to do. He said, but still they won't hear. Go ahead and read the next but, verse. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Now listen now. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. Uh huh. And there a little. And here a little and there a little. Go ahead. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. That they might be broken, fall back and be snared and be taken. Who are these they? The people that are religious drunk. If you read this book to them, they tell you. That, well, you know, Moses and Elijah is in heaven. You go to St. John, the third chapter, and Jesus said, ain't nobody is going, no man is going to heaven except for the one that came down, talking about himself. Even at the end of Revelation, at the end of the white, just before the white throne judgment, it says, the Lord, got Satan and cast him into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are. He didn't say, and all the rest of the people that sinned to me because only two guys going to be in there during the millennium period. So when you read that, that breaks them, that push them back. God going to take his church off the earth before the great tribulation. Then you go read after the tribulation, the Lord's going to come. This is what this word do. Precept pushes the lie out of existence, sisters and brothers. As long as you read this book, no untruth can stand. I mean, 
no untruth can stay. So that's why the Lord said, with stammering lips, and another tongue will I speak to this people. For all that they still won't hear. Paul co-signed that. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. Because nobody pays no attention. But if you read this book, sisters and brothers, you can break the back of a liar. Because the word of God is stronger than the precepts of men. 1 Corinthians 14, and we're going to start at verse 20. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, and verse 20. Now look what Paul said. Go ahead and read. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Uh-huh. Howbeit in malice be ye children. Now he said, don't be children in understanding, but in malice be you children. Go ahead and read. But in understanding be men. But in understanding be men. Go ahead. And the law it is written. Uh, in the law it is written. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. With men of other tongues and other lips. What other tongue and lip? That means with men of other languages. Right. I speak English. You got somebody speak Spanish that's teaching the word of God. Somebody speaking Russian. Somebody speaking uh, Italian. Still, with men of other lips will I speak to this people. But then you come to the same results that Isaiah came to. And what is that? And yet for all that, they will not hear me, saith the Lord. And yet for all of that, they won't hear me. Said the Lord, why won't they hear him? Because they drunk. Spiritually drunk. And where did most of this drunkenness come from? Let's go look at it. Let's go into Revelation 17 chapter. Revelation 17. And I mean it's going on. And people really don't care. Because somewhere along the line, somebody didn't read them the consequences of misteaching the word of God. Revelation 17 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, uh -huh. and talked with me, go ahead. saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, this is a great religion. It's called a whore. Why is it a whore? Because it's a prostitute religion. It says from God it don't have nothing to do with God. They even say with their own, in their own literature that we don't necessarily go along with the Bible. That's the Catholic Church system. This is what we're talking about. The great false religion that rules over many people. Go ahead and read. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Uh -huh. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication because all of them recognize it with great honor. Mm -hmm. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What is this wine? Go back and find out. Where did Sunday come from? Not because Christ rose on it, neither because Paul ate bread, on, broke bread on the Sunday. It came from Emperor Constantine, sisters and brothers. Your salvation is not important enough for you to go in the history books and prove some of the stuff you've been taught in your church. Christmas, Christian Sabbath day. Come out of that cup. Easter, come out of that cup. Christmas, come out of that cup. Going to heaven, come out of that cup. You can eat anything. All you got to do is pray over. Come out of that cup and on and on and on. And the world is drunk with this false religion. Go ahead and read. So he carried me away in the spirit uh -huh. into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Go ahead. Full of names of blasphemy, uh -huh. having seven heads and ten horns. Now this is the European Union, sisters and brothers. But then that's another lesson. Go ahead and read. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color uh -huh. and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Go ahead. Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And that is bad doctrine. A golden cup. The cup is cold. Mm -hmm. Gold. But the mixture is poison, sisters and brothers. That's what killed the whole creation. 
Adam and Eve ate from the wrong tree. This is what's going to keep you from salvation. You drinking the wine of this golden cup. Go ahead and read. And upon her forehead was a name written. Uh-huh. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Great mystery. Go ahead and read. The mother of harlots uh -huh. and abominations of the earth. Remember, she's a whore that sits on many waters, but she is also a mother of harlots that right. come out of it. What, is, what do you mean? Go and read. Pay attention. Listen. She, her own self, will say, we are the mother right. church. That's right. The mother church. But all the churches come out on the West, come out of her. That's why all of them observe Sunday. You Baptist, you Methodist, Episcopalian, Lutheran, 25th day of December, you got a Christmas tree in your house. Seventh day Adventist, you got a Christmas tree. You res resisted for a while, but now you have confirmed. <laughs> you know? Going to heaven, she gave you that. She is your mother. Go ahead and read. And I saw the woman drunken with blood, with the blood of the saints uh -huh. and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Go ahead. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Then, and what she was, she is drunk with the blood of the saints. Started a long time ago during the Inquisition. This Catholic church stamped out the original Christians. Right. Took your children from them. Shipped them off. A lot of them, Titus didn't put them all on the African continent. Mm -hmm. The mother church had France and Portugal put a lot of them on the African continent mm -hmm. and taught them Christianity. Right. Even though they knew who they was. That's why when you look at the old map, you see all right there, in West Africa, a little kingdom called the Kingdom of Judah. The babies didn't put it there. The people that took them there put it there because they knew that they were Israelites. And they taught them this Roman Christianity, what the world have today. So this church has suffered great violence by the, so the saints have suffered Great violence, this church. And now the residuals are still hanging over. Because I'm going to tell you something, sister and brother. Many times, the conflict between the servants of God and the spiritual drunk, drunkenness starts in their own household, starts at home. Many times this conflict come up because it is a conflict. And it gets serious sometimes. Now let me go and show you what the Lord said concerning this conflict. This is, the Lord said it before he came in the flesh. Let's go into Micah, the seventh chapter. Micah chapter seven. You cannot be a servant of God and go along with the status quo that's being taught as the word of God nowadays. It just don't work. It just don't work. And you think it's okay because you don't understand the consequences of doing it, but the consequences are going to come after a while. Look what the Lord said. Now, this is talking about people that really, that's, that's dealing with the truth. Verse 2, Micah 7 and 2. Micah chapter 7 and verse 2. Read it. The good man is perished out of the earth, uh -huh. and there is none upright among men. Yo, he's talking among people, religious men, people that deal with the truth. Go ahead and read. They all lie and wait for blood. Uh -huh. They hunt every man his brother with uh -huh. a net. Uh -huh. Now skip right on down to verse 5 and go ahead. Trust ye not in a friend. Uh -huh. Put ye not confidence in a guy. Uh -huh. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Even you have to watch what you say to your wife. Mm -hmm. And watch what you say to your friend when it comes to the word of God. Go ahead and read. For the son dishonoreth the father. Uh huh. The daughter riseth up against her mother. Go ahead. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Uh huh. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. And the mothers against the daughters, daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are going to be those of his own house. 
This is talking about when it comes to the word of God. How do you know, Brother Boy? Well, then we're going to let Jesus tell you, okay? Let's go into Matthew's 10th chapter. You do believe Jesus. I wonder sometimes, but I'm anyway, I'm going to let him tell you. Matthew's chapter 10. And we're going to start reading at verse 34. Because I want to, I want to, you to pay attention to what the Lord said, not what I say. People get mad. I hear a Lord have a whole lot of people that gets mad at me. Oh, we don't like what you say. Well, look, I am only saying what's written in the book. You say you're a Christian. Why is it that you ain't that you don't believe this book? You say you're an Israelite. Why is it that you don't believe this book? Jesus said those that know the Father would be will be glad when they see him. So if you knew the Father and you knew the Son, then you should be glad when you see guys like me because I'm going to read this book to you. And I show you what, what people have said. Well, you know, Jesus, he come. He want peace. We want peace. He want peace. Let me show you what Jesus said. Matthew 10 and verse 34. 10 and 34. Go ahead and read. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Go ahead and read. I came not to send peace, uh -huh. but a sword. I came not to send peace, but a sword. This is Jesus talking here. Go ahead and read. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, uh -huh. and the daughter against her mother, uh -huh. and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Go ahead. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Isn't this what we just got through reading in Micah, the seventh mm -hmm. chapter? He's talking about religion system, brother. Somebody going to come in here with the truth, and they're going to put it on the table, and all of a sudden, even in the household, you're going to have people against one another. Because one going to have the truth, and the other one going to have these fables that they call the truth. And it's going to be conflict, sisters and brothers. Going to be major conflict. Did you finish that? Huh? For, go ahead and read. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Pay attention. The Lord said it again. Mm -hmm. He that loveth father or mother more than me. It's not worthy of me. Go ahead. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me uh -huh. is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter are sisters and brothers. That's right. More than he loved the Lord is not worthy of the Lord. Because whoever you love, that's who you're going to listen to. It's all that simple. Whoever you love. So the Lord said he came to bring a sword, didn't he? Not peace. Ain't this what we just read? Now let's go into Ephesians and pursue this. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians chapter six. Because we want to know what this word is, sisters and brothers. Because it's obvious. People don't understand what it is. Ephesians chapter six. And we're going to start reading at verse 11. See, and we're going to learn something else too. We're going to learn that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood people. That's right. We wrestle against spiritual beings, wickedness in high places. When you go to Revelation 13 chapter, it tells you that that woman that we just had, she, she was powerful but not by her own power. For Satan gave her his seat and great authority. So you will understand what you're about to read. Ephesians 6 and verse 11. Ephesians 6 and verse 11. Okay, go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God uh -huh. that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against Satan, sisters and brothers. Because who you wrestling with? Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, uh -huh. against powers, uh -huh. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, uh -huh. against spiritual wickedness and high places. That's who we are wrestling with. We are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Satan put this thing out here and the man adopted it. And you think that you are fighting against flesh and blood. But servants know that they ain't fighting, fighting against flesh and blood. We know that we are dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, the Lord said, put on your whole armor of God that you might be, stand, be able to stand. Go ahead and read. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Go ahead. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh-huh. And having done all to stand. Now that evil, real evil day is talking about the great tribulation. Right. If you get caught outside of the place of safety, you're going to have to have a whole lot of armor. Go ahead and read. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. See, this is, this is the armor. First thing is you have to know the truth. Go ahead and read. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. That means you got to live it. Go ahead. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And your feet shod with the preparation. In other words, you got to know this book. That's right. And be prepared to use it whenever the opportunity presents itself or the need come about. Go ahead and read. Above all. Taking the shield of faith, uh -huh. wherewith ye, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the biggest thing of all is the shield of faith. You got to believe this, sister right. and brother. You got to believe this book. You got to believe this is the word of God. So if you really believe it's the word of God, then that is your shield. Your faith is your shield. That is what's going to protect you against the fiery darts of the wicked. But most important, look at this. Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. That's that sword that the Lord brought down here. He said, look, I come not to bring peace, but a sword. What sword is it? The word of God. I'm going to drop this truth here. And all of a sudden, there's going to be conflict in the same household, in the same family, conflicts in the churches, because I'm coming and I done dropped this word here. The word of God, the word of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's the sword of the spirit. Sister. Let's see what this word will do. Let's go into Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews chapter four. And we're going to read one verse. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, we're going to read one verse. Because Jesus said he come not to bring peace, but a sword. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, is the word of God, sisters and brothers. When he dropped this word in a family, all of a sudden, division appeared. Why is it? Because what will this sword do? Hebrews 4 and 12, read it. For the word of God is quick. For the word of God is quick. And powerful. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. And sharper than any two-edged sword. That's why I say out of his mouth came a two-edged sword. That's right. That's right. Because this is word, sisters and brothers. What will it do? Go ahead and read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Uh-huh. And of the joints and marrow. Go ahead. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That word will pull the cover off of it. Find out what your thoughts are. Find out what's in your heart. Cut away all lies, sisters and brothers. Word of God. The sword of the Spirit. That's what Jesus said, I came to bring. I didn't come to bring peace. The world is too messed up. How can I come and bring peace on a world that's messed up? I have to fix it first. In order for me to fix it, I have to cut it down with this sword in my mouth. In other words, I have to teach him. And when it gets, when I start doing that, it's going to get ugly. Got him killed. So what do you think going to happen to you? Right. Now let's go into Matthew's the 10th chapter. And look what he told his servant, sisters and brothers. Matthew's, Matthew's chapter 10. He did this so those of us that serve him will know. It's smooth with some of us, with some of us right, some people right now. But the time going to come, sisters and brothers, going to get real ugly. Going to get real ugly. And the Lord letting you know, I'm not sending you out into a love fest. I'm sending you where it's going to take all you got to stand. Matthews 10 and 1. Go ahead. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, uh -huh. he gave them power against unclean spirits. Go ahead. To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So when the Lord send you out, he send you out prepared, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and go ahead. Behold, I send you forth as sheep uh -huh. in the midst of wolves. Uh -huh. Be ye therefore wise as serpents 
and harmless as doves. He said, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Because you're going to get attacked on every side. But I want you to be as wise as a serpent and gentle and harmless as a dove. I don't want you to go out there trying to destroy people. I want you to go out there and edify people. Go ahead and read. But beware of men, uh -huh. for they will deliver you up to the councils. Go ahead. And they will scourge you in their synagogue. Uh -huh. And ye shall be brought before governors uh -huh. and kings for my sake, and a testimony against them and the Gentiles. He said, beware. Some of you are going to get scourged in the church. You're going to get thrown out. You're going to be brought before governments. He said, but don't worry about it. I'm going to deal with you. Well, you that find yourself in this band, in this Position in this great drama for my sake. Go ahead and read. Let's skip, to 21. Let's skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. Now that's what's going to happen because they're religiously drunk. Mm -hmm. They think they're doing the right thing. When I tell you, you got to keep these commandments to get salvation. That's what Jesus told a young man. When he come to him, he said, good master, what, good, what things should I do to get Eternal life. First thing Jesus said, don't call me good. But if you will, ain't none good but, but God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. That was cut and dry. Anything after that was irrelevant. And when I tell people, if you, you have to keep the commandments and get salvation, oh no, uh-uh, them old laws are done away with. Then all of a sudden, Battle his own, and my own brother might, de might one day might, in the name of righteousness, deliver me up in front of some council. Right. I don't think my brother, but I'm letting you know yours will. Because one thing about my brothers, however crazy we all are, we are still one family. But anything can happen, sister and brother. Go ahead and read. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, uh -huh. and the father the child, uh -huh. and the children shall rise up against their parents uh -huh. and cause them to be put to death. Now this will happen. Why? Because Jesus said it can happen. That's why I know ain't nothing, ain't nothing off the table. Nothing. Go ahead and read. And ye shall be hated of all men uh -huh. for my name's sake. Go ahead. But he that endured to the end shall be saved. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endure unto the end shall be saved. He didn't say you saved now. No. But he that endure unto the end shall be saved. Because that's a fable. We are saved now. I said, if you are saved now, then why is the Lord say he won't blot you out of the book of life? Right. If, gonna, if he said you can get blotted out of the book of life, I, I think that you are not saved. Because if you're in the book of life, that's supposed to be a cinch. But he said, if you do what I tell you, I will not blot you out of the book of life. Skip down to verse 24 and go ahead. The disciple is not above his master. He's letting you know this now. The follower is not above his master. Go ahead and read. Nor the servant above his Lord. Nor the servant above his Lord. Go ahead. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master uh -huh. and the servant as his Lord. He says, it's enough. You ain't above your master or your Lord. But it's enough if you be as him, be like him. Go ahead and read. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub. If they have called me a devil. Go uh, ahead and read. How much more shall they call them of his household? How much more shall they call them that's following him? All oh, that's simple. He used himself as an example. If they would call me a devil. In other words, if they will crucify or kill me, what do you think they'll do to you? They will do the same thing, sisters and brothers. The same thing. In the name of the Lord. Why? Because they are spiritually drunk. Because they've been drinking out of that cup that's in the hand of that, that golden cup that's in the hand of the whore that sits on many waters. In other words, you're still eating of the tree of the knowledge of good, of knowledge of good and evil. You're still doing it, sister. Let's go into St. John, 16th chapter, because I'm going to show you how serious this thing can get. 
St. John chapter 16. John 16. Because people think, well, you know, brother boy, you know, it ain't quite like that. You, uh, sisters and brothers, I'm going to tell you something. When I wrote that book, God, Lord called me to write that book before we went to heaven. I found out that the word of God mean exactly what it said. I mean exactly because he called the nations and the dynasty of the Gentiles in order the way they came and told you what they was going to do, and they did it. And everyone, and all of it was written before one act had taken place. Right. In fact, it was so prophecy and history was so accurate until it actually frightened me while I was re writing the book. Because I was educated then. And one of the biggest education I got was, well, you better believe the word of God because this thing here is on point. St. John 16 uh, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. St. John chapter 16 and verse 1. So you better believe this, sisters and brothers, because it can happen. Because when you think that you're serving God in your mind, you've been brainwashed and think that you're serving God, a lot of things you do. Look at people, how they're killing people at the abortion yep. centers. Look at the people that have killed people in the name of the Lord. More people have died in the name of the Lord than in, than in any other for, then for any other reason, sisters right. and brothers. 16 and 1. Go ahead and read. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. He said, I'm speaking to I don't want you to be offended. Go ahead and read. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Uh-huh. Yeah. The time cometh that wh whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. They shall put you out of their churches. And the time is going to come that whoever kill you will think that they are doing God a service. And we've seen some of that already. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And these things will they do unto you uh -huh. because they have not known the Father nor me. And they're doing it because they don't know me or the Father. Go ahead and read. But these things have I told you uh -huh. that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. Uh -huh. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. He said, now look. I'm going to have to go. So I'm, gonna, I'm telling you these things because I won't be with you. I'm going to leave. So when they come upon you, you will know this is what the Lord told me. And you won't despair and break under pressure because you'll be looking for it to come, sisters and brothers. You'll be looking for it to come because people don't want to hear this thing. People don't want to hear me tell them if you keep, don't keep God's commandment, you're going to go in the lake of fire. And the worm's going to eat you and the fire going to burn on you forever and you ain't going to be burned up or consumed. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear smooth things. Let's go in Isaiah the 30th chapter and they'll let you know that. Isaiah chapter 30. They don't want to hear that. You don't want to tell, you don't want to hear that you can't do anything you want and still get into God's kingdom. You can't go out and repeatedly commit adultery and fornication and get into God's kingdom. I'm telling you because I love you. As long as you're breathing, you have a chance. Stop it now. Because once you die in your sin, you got a problem. Stop it now, sisters and brothers. Because Solomon tells you in Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, as long as you are living, there is hope. Take advantage of the goodness that God has given you. Find out what the truth is and live it. Isaiah 30 and verse 1, and verse uh, 8 rather. Isaiah 30 and verse 8. Because people don't want to hear the truth. And take offense when you keep bringing it to them. Go ahead and read 30 and 8. Isaiah 30 and 8. Go ahead. Now go. Write it before them in a table uh -huh. and note it in a book. Go ahead. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. He said, I want you to write this down. So when, from generation to generation, somebody will be able to open this book and read this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. That this is a rebellious people. A rebellious people, especially Israel. Go ahead. Lion children. And lion children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. They won't hear the law of the Lord. And it's come down to this generation. And not only Israel, but all of the sons of Adam is just about to come here now. 
rebellious. They will not hear the law of the Lord. Oh, that old law ain't, ain't no good. Jesus done away with it. Go ahead and read. Would say to the seers, see not. Uh-huh, those that see the, the truth. I don't want to, uh, look, get, get out of my face. Go ahead and read. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Uh-huh. Speak unto us smooth things. Uh-huh. Prophesy deceits. Don't come to me talking about I'm going to burn in the lake of fire. I don't want to hear that right. stuff about my mama, who was a mean and evil woman, going standing judgment. She might end up there. Don't tell me old rotten, no good John ain't in the lake of fire as dead as he. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear nothing hard. Tell me that Christ loved everybody. He wants you to come as you are. He don't care if you're a thief. He don't care if you are an adulterer. He don't care if you homosexual. He love everybody. That's what I want you to tell me. Go ahead and read. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. And tell me, and they're telling the seal and the, and the man of God, get out of the way. Get, go out of the way. Turn away from this, what you call this legalism. Right. Get you out of the path. Go ahead. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before. We don't even want to know his name. Right. This is about. Don't speak to me about that. They don't even want to hear the name of Jesus. But let's go and show you. Let's go into Acts, the fifth chapter. Because I'm going to show you, even if you didn't speak the name, it ain't got nothing to do with the name of Jesus. It's got something to do with the message that the Lord brought, right. no matter what name he was called. Let's